Svana took up the scroll and wound the wooden spools to read. Environment, nurture, stress, intellectual, growth. In the innate experience, the mind is melded to the function of the body and experiences and represents the stress of the body directly. In the reflective state, the mind experiences a state of stress that is functionally separate from the body. In the reflective state, the mind develops or weakens through stress, just as the body develops or weakens through stress. And just as the enriching experience of the body is to be appropriately fed and tested for strength, so is the enriching experience for the mind to be appropriately fed and tested for strength. The mind's nutrition is the information to be gleaned from interactive experience. The mind will be the result of the interactive experience the body has allowed it to encounter and navigate. The encountering of experience forms and molds the mind according to the influences contained within the experience to the extent they are imported. The experience of stress in the mind, just as in the body, is the difference between expectation and experience. Reflective stress can arise in the subjective context or in the objective context. In the subjective context, stress arises as a result of a perceived threat to the organism's considered interests. Some of those interests are objective in that they are in fact necessary to the organism's ability to achieve its potential. Others are subjective in that they are not necessary but are considered necessary. This is the difference between need and desire. In the subjective context, the failure of the environment to fulfill a desire causes stress to the mind. The level of stress experienced will match the degree of investment placed on the desire regardless of actual need. This stress weakens the mind unless and until it triggers recognition of the difference between need and desire. Stress as an emotive response must be calibrated to comply with the reality of the environment as it is. In the objective context, the mind may experience stress where its need-based interests are threatened as a result of the potential failure of its environment to provide. But that is its innate response. It may also experience stress where reasonable expectations are not met as a result of subjective intent within an environment that would otherwise provide. In the human context, this applies to environmental degradation as well as to avoidable human conflict. In the context of rational reflection, the requirement is not to discard expectation, but rather to calibrate expectation in such a way as promotes the utmost manifestation of objective potential within the environment. The utmost manifestation for the human is the achievement of stability and the provisioning of innate interest within the context of the environment, such that the mind can then be allowed the ability to concentrate on imposing controlled stress upon itself in the pursuit of increased understanding through positive substantive experience. Controlled stress in the context of mind is fundamentally no different from controlled stress in the context of body. It is to train the mind first in rational discipline, then to use that rational discipline to restructure the subjective persona to meet the actual requirements of objective experience and objective potential. In the objective context, to the extent the environment does not meet expectation, the mind's experience must and is correct to include stress. Stress where calibrated through rational intent to respond to threats against the achievement of objective potential is a warning signal of fundamental importance. The correct response is not to revert by diminishing expectation to the innate. It is to act immediately and forcefully to extinguish the threat and build resilience against it arising and growing in potential again.